Every day, something dramatic happens in the Caribbean that affects our lives. We'll give you the details. We'll give you the facts on Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Fedrick. How's Eddie Fedrick? So glad you can join us. The WHO is warning against surrender or declaration of victory regarding COVID-19. This story takes the lead in today's edition of Caribbean Perspective for Thursday, 3rd February 2022. Details when we return. Conveniently located in the Grand Anne Shopping Center, for over 40 years, Food Fair has provided quality service at affordable prices. Now, grocery shopping is made easier and more convenient from the Food Fair web store. Hey, babe. Hmm? Listen, now, I need you to go down to Food Fair to get some groceries. All right, no problem. Right away. Thanks, babe. What are you doing? You're supposed to be going to Food Fair to get a grocery man. I am. But didn't you know you can order your groceries online from the Food Fair web store? Are you serious? Of course. All you have to do is just to log on to www.foodfair.gd with credit card in hand and with an order of $100 or more, Food Fair Granans will deliver up to three miles away. And you don't even have to worry about your information, you know. Their safety measures are excellent. So hold on. You just order online and Food Fair will deliver to you? Yep. Oh baby, better hurry up and order, man. I already did. They should be here any minute now. Enjoy easy online shopping anytime from your home or office from the Food Fair web store. Food Fair, where you can fill your baskets without emptying your pockets. Welcome back. Head of the World Health Organization is warning countries not to surrender or declare victory over COVID-19 as to do either would be premature. More in this Reuters TV report. The World Health Organization on Tuesday cautioned countries eager to lift coronavirus precautions, saying Omicron hasn't yet peaked in many countries. It's premature for any country either to surrender or to declare victory. This virus is dangerous and it continues to evolve before our, our, our very eyes. WHO is currently tracking four sublineages of the Omicron variant of concern, including BA.2. The emerging BA.2 form of the Omicron coronavirus variant does not seem to be any more severe than the original BA.1 form, a World Health Organization official said on Tuesday. There's no indication that there's a change in severity. Um, again, uh, Omicron overall we know is more transmissible. It has more growth advantage and it causes less severe disease compared to Delta, but it's still a very dangerous virus. The comments come as the BA2 version of Omicron begins to replace the more common original BA1 version in countries such as Denmark. These two main lineages of Omicron differ from each other by more than 40 point mutations. BA2 was first identified in South Africa in early December. BA2 is more transmissible than the more common BA1 and more able to infect vaccinated people, according to a Danish study that analyzed infections in more than 8,500 Danish households between December and January. We need people to be aware that this virus is continuing to circulate and it's continuing to evolve. WHO officials said vaccines, masking, and social distancing are still effective tools to fight the virus. The Antigua Barbuda Hotels and Tourism Association is in full support of the policy to allow only vaccinated travelers to enter the country. Cabinet has opted to maintain the policy after considering relaxing it at its last meeting. ABS's Ragib Aparicio reports. Antigua Barbuda Hotels and Tourism Association Executive Chairman Vernon Jeffers says the possibility of the vaccine mandate for travelers to this country being dropped was discussed in an executive board meeting last week. He says the requirement has been deemed an asset for hoteliers. It presented a, a scenario where Antigua was continued a, a safe, sun, sea and safe destination. Um, and I, I think that has really helped us to position ourselves um, to be at, at that right place where persons had that sense of confidence when they traveled to, to the destination. Cabinet last week decided against allowing unvaccinated visitors to enter Antigua and Barbuda with the benefit of a rapid antigen or PCR test. Government said it needs to gather more data, however, the policy would be changed if the need arises. Jeffers shares the stance arrived at by ABHTA members, at least for the time being. 
we have taken a position that whether or not um, the, the cabinet um, decide that they will open the destination to, to unvaccinated persons to travel. Um, for, the, for the moment, we are going to maintain our policy of just um, allowing vaccinated persons to stay at the resort. There are more than 50 private sector tourism-based entities who are members of the ABHTA, including Hammock Cove Resort and Spa, Hodges Bay Resort and Spa, and Sandals Grand Antigua. Rakib Aparisi reporting for ABS News. The United National Congress in Trinidad is once again casting doubt over the independence of the newly appointed Police Service Commission. In addition, the party has called on the members to resign if they are unable to provide the answers to certain questions. Alicia Boucher of TV6 News tells us more. Opposition leader Kamala Pasad Bisesa maintains her position that President Paula May Weeks had no right to appoint a new police service commission until the circumstances which led to the resignation of the former commission are made transparent. The United National Congress initially voiced concern about some members who now sit on the commission in relation to their past affiliations with government officials through employment and other business ventures. But the saga has not stopped there. Speaking at the UNC's virtual report on Monday night, Pasad Bisesa leveled further allegations against some members of the commission, stating that there were links between them and the president. In addition to that, she pointed fingers at the independent senators, blanketing them in her allegations of nepotism. This eat of food behavior is what has also made the independent bench into a PNM bench in Parliament. This is the absolute worst and shameless independent bunch of senators in the history of Trinidad and Tobago. Basad Bissessa said there are still questions to be answered concerning the last merit list for the appointment of a police commissioner and the former Bliss C. Basad led police service commission. Up to today, that elephant remains in the room and no one will talk about it. Who was the high official? who blocked the list from coming to Parliament, who went by Paula and take the list away and tell her, don't send it to the Parliament, collapse that list, collapse the Police Service Commission, and not a word up to today. Who was that senior official? I ask again, Prime Minister Rowley, was it you? Pasad Bisesa also threw this question out to the new Police Service Commission. How? Very important, now. Huh? How did government officials and the media get the Stanley John report? The UNC leader said if that question, along with who advised the scrapping of the last merit list, can't be answered, then she believes the new commission should take the following step. And if you can't do that, then you should just resign and go because you're totally compromised. Alicia Boucher, TV6 News. You're listening to Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Frederick. Opposition and government went head-to-head -head in Parliament over the $6 billion subsidy to the Guyana Sugar Corporation, Guy Suko. Gordon Mosley of News Source Guyana reports. Suram Jatan, who opened the debate for the second day today, said the coalition realized early in its tenure that Guy Suko was not sustainable and moves were made to right-size the industry. He recalled that the former government doled out $3 billion in its first 36 months in government support to Guy Suko. According to Ramjet and the PP Civic's continuous criticism of the coalition's handling of the sugar industry is unfounded. But they have felt that we must, like them, make that which is so unprofitable and a black hole, we must pour money, and that is what is going to cause huge problems. Mr. Ramjitan also argued that the PP Civic government's support for the sugar industry is really to cater to its support base and not for profit for any logical reasons. This action, he said, is building resentment in the country, where citizens are observing that Guy Suko, although not profitable, is being favored. Because you have a certain base that comes from sugar, a base support, and that base support, you feel, must only have the cash transfers and the cash payments. In response, the Agriculture Minister Zulfakar Mustafa said what the PP Civic government will continue to do is to provide support to the cash-strapped Guy Suko. He said the PP Civic will never abandon its responsibility to sugar workers. When we invest another $6 billion, we create more jobs. Tens of thousands of jobs we create. 
and we help tens of thousands of families. We bring it, we, we put in the village economy more cash and thousands of people, thousands of people are benefiting, not only the sugar workers, but people who live in the community and who depend on the sugar industry indirectly. In addition to all the money guys Sickle got last year, in December, an additional $3 billion was given to the sugar company to support its operations. On the promise of reopening the estates, Minister Mustafa said that the process has started to reopen those estates, but it will be done in phases. Despite all of the money that has been pumped into the sugar industry over the years, the sugar company and Guy Suko continues to see major declines in production. Landslides and flooding from heavy rains in Sao Paulo State in Brazil have killed at least 21 people, including seven children on Friday last, according to public security officials there. Tamika Rodney of New Source Guyana has more. According to Sao Paulo state authorities, nine other people were injured in the rains and four more were missing, while some 500 families were left homeless across the state. Sao Paulo's governor, Joao Doria, flew over the flooded areas on Sunday and said he had authorized $2.79 million of emergency aid for the affected cities. Since December, heavy rains have triggered deadly floods in northeast Brazil, threatened to delay harvest in the Midwest and briefly forced the suspension of mining operations. Over in Venezuela, Tamika Rodney again of News Source Guyana tells us the opposition leader, Juan Guaido, has proposed to the U.S. lifting some sanctions against Maduro government and some of his officials as a bargaining chip to get him to soften his stance. Venezuela's opposition has suggested that the United States ease economic sanctions in the country and some of its individuals, a potential policy shift aimed at bringing President Nicolas Maduro back to the negotiation table, according to National Assembly head Juan Guaido. The plan could be put in motion even before talks hopefully resume in Mexico, Guaido said, as the opposition pushes for free and fair elections as soon as possible, as well as changes to Venezuela's judicial system. In a tweet late Friday, Guaido said progressive lifting of sanctions is subject to the government agreeing to certain conditions. An official for the State Department said the United States does not preview actions and sanctions. The United States, along with its partners and allies, seek to use multilateral pressure to remove Venezuela toward a democratic solution. The official said in a written reply to questions, the Maduro regime can create a path to easing sanctions by engaging in sincere discussions with the opposition to create the necessary conditions to enable free and fair elections to take place in Venezuela. Conveniently located in the Grand Anne Shopping Center, for over 40 years, Food Fair has provided quality service at affordable prices. Now, grocery shopping is made easier and more convenient from the Food Fair web store. Hey, babe. Hmm? Listen, uh, I need you to go down to food fair to get some groceries. All right, no problem. Right away. Thanks, babe. What are you doing? You're supposed to be going food fair to get a grocery, man. I am. But didn't you know you can order your groceries online from the food fair web store? Are you serious? Of course. All you have to do is just log on to www.foodfair.gd with credit card in hand. And with an order of $100 or more, food fair granites will deliver up to three miles away. And you don't even have to worry about your information, you know. The safety measures are excellent. So hold on. You just order online and Food Fair will deliver to you? Yep. Oh baby, better hurry up and order, man. <laughs> I already did. They should be here any minute now. Enjoy easy online shopping anytime from your home or office from the Food Fair web store. Food Fair, where you can fill your baskets without emptying your pockets. I am Eddie Frederick. This has been Caribbean Perspective, a whole new approach to highlighting developments in the Caribbean. In the meantime, please continue to log on to CaribbeanPerspective.com for more daily news and more.